having arrived, um, we'll call this meeting to order. Could you please join me in saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Okay. Um, second order of business is the hearing of visitors. Do we have any visitors today? Only the hardy are here. No hearing? Okay. We have some yes, but we don't have any visitors to the podium. So, uh, we will move on to item three, which is the consent agenda. The consent agenda is the routine business of the school committee. Um, and if there are any school committee members that would like to remove an item for further discussion, please take a look and let me know which letter you would like removed, if any. Motion to approve. Looking for a second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Very good. Um, report of the superintendent of schools, learning and teaching. Before I begin, um, those of you, as uh, Mr. Minicello said, we are a hardy bunch tonight. I believe the governor has even canceled the state of the state address. But the Brockton School Committee is here. But what, what I would like to do is to let you know that the student representative, uh, again, we asked her to stay home this evening. Uh, so she'll be back with her report at the next meeting. And I also want to tell you that we had um, actually a lengthy uh, presentation for you tonight on uh, accountability. And for the new members, this came about because we had done a presentation, I want to say sometime in early November or late October, and we were going to uh, wait till we had new members on board to do a lengthier presentation and also to share with you some of the things we're doing to support schools uh, due to some of the testing results. Um, we have a number of superintendent focus schools. So that being said, I would like to put that off until the next meeting. Um, at that point, I believe Maya Carpenter will be back. Um, I can bring my principals in. Uh, Dr. Ethan Cancel has, uh, with uh, Elizabeth Barry, has done an excellent job putting together and working with our executive team to present this, to entertain your questions, uh, and to have our additional staff members here. So I hope that's something that is met with your approval this evening. So that being said, I also want to bring to your attention that on February 6th, it is a Thursday, I have been given official word that Commissioner Mitchell Chester is going to be in the district. And we're excited to welcome him. Um, his day will start very early. He will be greeted at the Brookfield Elementary School with coffee and pastry. And his reason uh, for coming here was we had invited him to see Breakfast in the Classroom, which is a program where um, all our students, when they come in, are given breakfast in the classroom. Uh, it's, and you've heard me report on this. It's very quick. You've heard uh, Tom Burke report on this, Mary Ellen Karain. We've worked very closely with our Brockton Education Association, and we've been very fortunate that it has been successful. So the commissioner will get to see it from start to finish with the, uh, you know, the coolers going down to the classroom, how the rubbish is dealt with, how the students are working during the time with the teacher. There isn't a loss of learning. And we have actually seen a number of pluses. And again, I want to thank the teachers. They've done an excellent job of, I went into a classroom, and I don't know if you remember me, my telling the story. You would think when the superintendent would come in that something would stop. The teacher would acknowledge there was none of it. The teacher kept teaching. The children were learning, and I was actually just able to be an observer in the room while this was happening. And I'm hoping that the commissioner sees exactly the same thing. Um, from there, we will go to the Barrett Russell School, where the commissioner will also see the breakfast in the classroom, which is our other site. Um, there has been talk about possibly expanding, but we have groups that are actually a task force in a couple of schools that have expressed an interest, because it takes more than just an interest. It takes a group getting together, the custodians, the teacher, the administrative staff, to make sure that if this is something that we're going to implement, and along with parents, that this is something that the school uh, wants to do and has a plan in place. When the commissioner finishes 
finishes, what he would like to do is have a focus group of administrators, teachers, I'm inviting any school committee members that would like to join us and I'll get back to you on a time when he will be there. So maybe we can also talk about some questions we might have for the commissioner or some things that um, he can certainly enlighten us on uh, if you want to talk about park, uh, if there are you know funding, if there are you know a number of issues that you want to speak to him about. I, I think he leaves here at about 11 o'clock. Uh, I've also invited Kim Gibson to join me on that day and we again will, will welcome him to see what has been successful in our district. So um, any questions? For those members who have not seen the um, Barrett Russell Kindergarten Center, it really is a place that at some point you, I think you definitely would like to visit so that you can see what, um, um, what the newest um, techniques and um, building with respect to our kindergartners uh, looks like. I know that a few of you have. Um, you can certainly, if, you, if you're interested in that, arrange through the superintendent, um, through Wander and Kathy, um, a nice little tour of that. I, I really think you'd enjoy it at some point. It won't take long, but it's, it's, really, it's really a nice uh, environment. and. Um, I, I still get a kick out of seeing the uh, the little sinks, the lower than usual sinks, um, <laughs> yeah. and the, the plumbing and all that. It's just yeah. so adorable, you know. Mm. But um, yeah, you should take take her up on that offer. So we'll get back to you with uh, again his schedule. Uh, I invite you to come, uh, and we're pleased to talk to him about the successes in our district uh, and the challenges. Okay, so um, on a happier note, uh, I'm going to go to, um, first of all, a couple of administrative appointments that you got in your packet this past week. And this goes back to um, back in October, I believe, um, we came to you and we started to talk about the organizational chart. And while I agree that money that is spent is best served, you used to always hear Dr. Malone talk about you know, the closest to the child, the teacher. Well, while I agree with that, we also, and I've seen this firsthand in six months, is I need to have an administrative staff, an organizational chart that makes sense for a district of 17,000 students. Mm -hmm. So I am very, very pleased and I thank the school committee for supporting uh, these two additional positions mm -hmm. that we talked about back in October. Uh, the first one uh, was a position of executive director, uh, 6 to 12, and also our alternative school. So that's a position that, if you remember, uh, Mr. Jerome held, he'd have to tell me how many years ago, before 2009, I believe. And when Mr. Jerome became deputy superintendent, that was a position that went away in the district, never went away. Mr. Jerome was juggling being your deputy superintendent of uh, learning and teaching, uh, still having you know, a role with, uh, as executive uh, director of um, you know, six to eight at the time. And in our middle schools, we've talked about this, they've really done wonderful. Uh, we can certainly always do better, but their schedules work, uh, their collaborative uh, working together, the teachers have worked, um, you know, they again for the district have been a real plus. So I am very pleased, uh, and again, I shared this with you uh, Friday to announce that our new executive director is Dr. Clifford Murray. Dr. Murray is here with us this evening, and Dr. Murray has been in the Brockton Public Schools for many years. Uh, he's been uh, a teacher of, I believe, science, uh, worked in our computer lab with math. He has been assistant uh, principal at East Middle School, mm -hmm. and most recently and presently is our principal at West Middle School. Um, so we are pleased to have him. Uh, he's got a big job ahead of him. He'll be transitioning with Deputy Superintendent John Jerome. Um, we'll come up with a schedule. And the one thing that we have decided, uh, this is the middle of the school year. So one of the things we've talked about, we've talked about it very briefly, uh, both uh, Mr. Jerome and myself will go over with uh, Dr. Murray. And we're going to actually have Dr. Murray anchor the West Middle School for the rest of the year. So what that means when we call it anchoring West Middle School is whether he goes there in the morning, make sure the day is off to a good start, are there any concerns, might go back there in the afternoon, we'll confer with his leadership team. I will have a plan in place as to, I do have to replace him as far as making sure that they are resourced to be able to deal with, you know, a middle school. So, but to do this in the middle of the year, I'm not comfortable just pulling somebody out. So Dr. Murray has agreed to do that and uh, we're very pleased to have him on board. Would you like to come up and uh, address the crowd tonight? <laughs> crowd. 
The at home crowd. Well, I'm sure your students at West Middle and the parents, I. I know they're uh, breathing a sigh of, uh, they're not probably going to be pleased, but we're, we're pleased. Well, I, I'm very excited uh, to be part of your team moving forward. Um, I've been a part of the Brockton Public Schools for 15 years, and I love the emphasis on students. And uh, I hope to uh, continue in that vein with uh, Mr. Jerome's guidance and uh, with your support. I will miss uh, terribly my team and uh, the students at West, but I'll get to enjoy the rest of this school year with them and certainly we won't be a stranger. So I look forward very much to working with this group and uh, with you in particular as uh, we move forward. Thank you very much. Questions? Um, no questions, just a couple of <laughs> comments. Um, I met Dr. Murray probably a little over four years ago when um, um, he was unpacking his items in the office over at West and um, he impressed me um, quite a bit uh, the first time we met. I could tell how um, excited he was certainly about becoming the principal of West but that um, he really did and does love the Brockton Public Schools and um, I've seen him firsthand um, really enhance that building, uh, work together with the staff. Um, West is a very, um, I would say, well-balanced and um, um, building where people enjoy coming to work. And I think the students can feel that and certainly um, benefit from the continuity and, and the harmony and just the feel, the good feelings that go out through the building. Um, he supports his people. Um, I think his people certainly respect that and in turn um, show him mutual admiration and mutual respect. It's a, it's a wonderful dynamic. Um, I think that this is a great opportunity being a, a 6 through 12 situation where um, Dr. Murray has um, such such a, a broad scope of um, experience in middle school but this will be the time um, where there can be that overlap in working together with Principal Wolder um, in terms of making a smooth transition, having clear communication, what what things um, Principal Wolder sees are uh, need a little of attention at the middle schools, um, so that when the kids come um, to the high school, these you know areas are being addressed. So he, I think he's the right person for the job. He certainly. Um, is a person that brings people together and definitely um, not a divider, someone that can bring Thank people you. together and I just think that it'll be a nice working relationship with Principal Walder and Dr. Murray um, because I've seen again firsthand how he, how he <coughs> involves people and makes people feel good about their job. Um, so I, I wish you luck. I'm certainly glad that uh, you are going to be the anchor for the rest of the year. We definitely want West to continue forward because it's been a, a great, you know, transition there. But um, I can't say enough and congratulate you enough on this. Thank you very much. I you know, you're it. going to be stepping into some great shoes. You know, Mr. Jerome has done a great job at the middle schools, and he certainly is going to be a wonderful mentor these, you know, few months. And he's a resource that uh, we always can because he's so generous, you know, you can always tap into him. I'll, we can I'll, always have, tap I'll into. have him on speed dial. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, so, thanks. Thank you for taking the position and thank, thank you, you for much. everything you've done. Um, you know I'll do my best, so thank you. Thank you very much. The next appointment uh, was our Director of Grants and Development and we had talked again about uh, putting together an office that could go after, you know, not only grants uh, for for our school system, but also start to tap in some of the development money, some of the nonprofits. There are a number of things that have already come up, and, and we're not resourced to be able to do that. So I'm pleased to announce that our new director of grants and development is Laurie Silva. Uh, Laurie Silva most recently was our uh, 21st coordinator. Uh, she has already stepped into this role. 
Um, we are looking for Laurie to work with Karen uh, Watkins Watt and to also start to build that office to work with our special ed department, our bilingual department, our health department, and, and not just to go after grants, but to go after grants that as we start to develop our strategic plan, looking at our mission, looking at our vision, making sure that's part of, of what we do every day. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to welcoming her to this team, to work very closely with the executive team. And as I told you um, back in October, I'd like to come back to you a year from now and say that it's been such a success, I'm looking to even build that office further. Um, so again, she couldn't be here with us this evening. She told me to tell you she will be at every school committee meeting going forward. And many of you have, of course, seen her at the school committee meetings. And I'm very, very excited about the things that we're really planning to do in that office. So congratulations to Laurie Silva. Laurie's been with us probably about 15 years also. Um, so vet veteran staff members that we're excited to give these opportunities to. We, um just for the uh, benefit of the new school committee members, uh, this is something that has been in the works for a number of years before um, Superintendent Smith came on board. This was something that we had discussed with Superintendent Malone, building that capacity, because basically if, if we can tap into grant monies and scholarships and resources that uh, we don't um, yet enjoy, and this position, um, the the idea of this position is that it's going to pay for itself and then some then you know it, it's a win-win for everybody um, you know Boston um, Springfield Worcester you know those are the big three and they tap into resources that we don't um, yet you know enjoy so hopefully we're going to be able to expand and um, benefit and our students will benefit from um, someone with Lori's uh, <coughs> I would say energy and competence. Um, you'll soon learn that she's someone that is definitely a go-getter and um, is extremely energetic and, and just keeps on keeping on. So I, I would anticipate this is going to be a great position um, that's going to enhance what we currently have and, and bring resources that, um, you know, we currently, you know, aren't tapping into that are out there. So. You'll see. You'll soon see. We'll, we'll all see. If, if not, we'll give the superintendent a hard time, but it's on her shoulders. <laughs> We're going to work very hard. And uh, my last appointment of the evening, um, you know, one of the things that we talked about when I became superintendent uh, was really about building a bench. And it is exciting to come on as superintendent, having been here 37 years, and looking at the talent that you have here in the Brockton Public Schools, because you've built it, you've nurtured it, and you've honored it. And you honored it tonight. You took a look at two people. We had a number of highly competitive candidates for these jobs. Um, we were able to select you know, Dr. Murray and Laurie Silva. And one of the things that you also told me was, again, coming on as superintendent, I need to make sure that, that the people that serve as your executive directors, as your deputy superintendents, are ready to step, step into this job at any time. And if you look at the articles that are in the paper, I believe there was one two weeks ago in the Globe that talks about communities having difficulty filling superintendency roles. So in looking at that, I'm taking this very seriously to work with a new generation of your administrators so that when it comes time for you to select a new superintendent, you have a bench. So in talking about that, I'm very pleased tonight to recommend to you for the position of Deputy Superintendent of Operations. And if you recall back in October, we took the Executive Director of Operations and Communications and we talked about making it a deputy role. Um, if you look at what I put in your packet, mm -hmm. I want you to take a look at the extensiveness of this role and what it means to the district. And when I tell you I'm pleased, uh, I'm recommending uh, Michael Thomas for the role of Deputy Superintendent of Operations. And you have to know that back when I was a teacher at East Middle School, mm. a young teacher came in, I want to say he was probably 22, 23 years old, filled in for, at the time, I think it was Danny Doors, a gym teacher that had been at East for many years and came in to fill that role. And he has served in certainly a number of jobs. Um, department 
head of phys ed at the high school. He served at an, as an assistant housemaster in Azure. Yellow. In the yellow. Went on to become the house master of Azure, uh, became your executive, executive director of operations, and last year, because they all do this so well, he also served as your interim high school principal at Brockton High at a time when Dr. Zach was leaving. He kept the, the ship moving along until Principal Wolder came into the role, so he has served in a number of roles. Uh, we work very closely together. We're a great team, and I am proud and honored to recommend him tonight to you as the Deputy Superintendent of Operations. Mr. Thomas, will you come up? Thank you, Superintendent Smith. I'm honored and humbled and um, I'm honored to serve the Brockton Public Schools, which I have done for 21 years, and um, I consider it a privilege to serve the school system of where I grew up and graduated from, and um, I'm just honored to have this opportunity and look forward to working hard and under the direction of Superintendent Smith to um, just move the school system along and keep doing great things for the system and working with the school committee, which I also thank you for your support. I look forward to working with the new members. It's been great working with the members that are still here over the last few years and the four years I've been in this position and um, to continue to do great things for the kids of Brockton. So I really appreciate it. Well, um, no. let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say something nice about Mr. Thomas, I think. Um, I met Michael, um, I would say maybe five years ago. Six, six years ago. And um, I can tell you one, not one thing, a number of things. Honesty, trustworthiness, follow through. Follow through is like one of the most. When, when you talk to Michael about an issue, you never have to like say it twice. It's always followed up on competently, honestly. Um, he is he is one of those go-to solid people um, that I'm so happy to have in the Brockton Public Schools. Someone that you you know rely on. Someone that um, is well respected throughout the entire district. Um, in his role since he's been in that position. Um, I think that um, there's a sense in the district that things get done, um, the buildings are supported, the people are supported. Um, that, um, that atmosphere, that environment was greatly improved when Michael came through the door. So I, I can't say enough about, um, about Mr. Thomas uh, with respect to what he's doing, what he has done. and what he will do in this new role. Um, I, I'm sure there are other members that would like to say a few words about Mr. Thomas. Yeah, I'd love to. Mr. Healy? Uh, I'd like to say that uh, as soon as I came on, uh, Tom, Mr. Thomas rather took me under his wing and uh, we became fast friends. And I think we've done some great things in the past couple of years. Uh, beginning with how we snickered when I handed uh, Dr. Malone the Ewo sand and said, I respect your uh, service, sir, but we're going to butt heads. And uh, I know you're going to be dedicated to the system uh, going forward many years, as I, I assume all the other appointees here tonight uh, will as well. And uh, in terms of filling in positions, you've also filled in over those few years as well, I would imagine. Mike, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. I mean that sincerely. Thank you. Mr. Robinson? Um, certainly uh, agree with everything uh, offered up by Mr. Minichello and, and, um, and Mike. Um, and it's, Mike's probably been a staff member at the central office who I've had the most opportunity to work with since coming on two years ago as a school committee member. Um, Help spearhead this recycling program with me and it just kind of continues to grow and evolve. Learned a handful of things together, I think, um, uh, about the impact of that kind of stuff, certainly. Um, and uh, excited and happy that, that you know you have the opportunity to, to continue to grow and develop in the district and serve us. Um, I have no doubt uh, that your service will continue and, and, as it always has. Um, our new members will um, 
very quickly to come to know and understand um, the value that Mike Thomas has in his district. Um, to the school committee, to the students, to the staff, to the schools, um, and, and I'm excited to, to have him on. Um, I guess with that, I don't know if we need to make a motion to accept um, his, his uh, Yes. A not nomination or his his nomination appointment appointment. Um, so I'd be happy to make the the motion to approve um, his appointment um, to deputy, deputy superintendent of operations. So okay. second that motion. Okay, Mr. Healy, second that motion. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Wonderful, unanimous. Okay. Um, at this time, I think we would like to have a... Um Can I just make one oh. comment? So behind sure. every great man is a great woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, And in Mike's case, it isn't just his wife, uh, Trisha Pika Thomas, who's also been in our system a long time, a very valued member. But if I didn't say how proud Sarah and Alyssa <laughs> and Caitlin would be of their dad, so again, there's a lot of great women behind Mr. Thomas. And I also see his father-in-law, Mr. Pika, uh, up there also. So That explains it. <laughs> He's got a great father, too. I know his father. He does. Like, I actually I was looking up. I thought that's who was here. But can we, uh, can we take a picture, Mr. Minichello? Absolutely. Can we Dr. Moran is going to... Thank you. Mrs. Thomas Thank down you. as well? Sure. Oh. All right. She, she's bowing out. Put you in the middle. So to finish up tonight, uh, Mr. Jerome was not here last school committee meeting when we talked about him retiring, the void it will leave. You know, we went on and on certainly about about how we feel. But but moving forward, um, one of the things you also found in your packet is the uh, job of deputy superintendent of teaching and learning that is being advertised. Um, I believe as of today, Dr. Moran as of today and I want you to take a look at that because I'm not sure why anyone would apply for these jobs we sat and we looked at the duties and responsibilities and as I said even with the deputy superintendent of operations a lot is expected in this job uh, so just to let the school committee know the job ad uh, is posted um, and I look forward to uh, to applicants you know coming forward and uh, and applying for this job and also Mr. Jerome, again, is, as he's leaving, I'm giving him more jobs. So as you heard us talk about transitioning in, Dr. Murray as the executive director, he'll work with Mr. Thomas as the deputy superintendent of operations, and he will work with uh, the new deputy superintendent of learning and teaching. I'm not sure Mr. Jerome's going to work. So we keep telling him that. You better be fast learners. <laughs> <laughs> So that is my report for the evening. Okay. Um, items to refer to subcommittee? <coughs> At this point, is there anything anyone would like to refer to subcommittee? I think um, we've... Mr. Robinson? Uh, just prior to the meeting, Dr. Smith and I talked, I think we'd like to try to maybe schedule an opportunity to convene the um, policy manual review uh, subcommittee. It's been some time. Um, we got a great new committee members. Um, my thought was maybe, um, I, I can't remember off the top of my head who's on that committee with me. I, I chair that committee. I think, is it Alicia, Ray, and you? Um, I, believe I, I think it's, I, I, this is just from memory. I thought it was Alicia, yeah, Ray, and you. Um, but thought that uh, we could maybe look at um, setting maybe a Saturday morning um, so we can sit for a good chunk of time, three or four hours, um, and really kind of hammer out a bunch of things versus having a one-hour meeting that just kind of right. nips the tip at of the At least have a plan as to how we're going to attack it this year. Yeah. Take a look at the manual. Um, and, and, and figure out who else we might like to bring in Good. to advise us, whether it's, uh, you know, administration, building level administration, other mm -hmm. folks from central office maybe to, to give thoughts and on what needs to be reviewed. I'm sure as we look at it, there'll be some things that jump way out. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, but but maybe um, after our school committee uh, 
retreat, which is scheduled for February 1st. Correct. Um, so maybe a, a Saturday later in February, um, and maybe Wanda can help offline, or, or we can get together right after this meeting and um, figure out a Saturday that'll work for us. I, that'd be great. I think I agree with you. Saturday mornings, uh, afternoons, whatever, are terrific. You know, we're not distracted. Yeah. Nobody's running to do something, and we and can spend we'll have some to time. Figure out, make sure we get the policy manuals in the hands of at least the three of us with enough advance that we can uh, start to look through and earmark pages and Good. and policies that we might want to bring to the table. Some that might be obsolete at this point. Others that you know <coughs> have priority. Uh, we can start to yeah. take a look. I can think of a few right off the top. But, uh, I don't know if you remember during the interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've done recycling, but I think probably our internet and online uh, electronic uh, mobile technologies um, in the schools and classrooms. Um, I've already had some conversations with Principal Wolder, and she's made some suggestions about some things that might need to be looked at. Um, I, I have a feeling, yeah. This was my internship project back, I think I told you, during the interview in 1999. Possibly the last time that it was and thoroughly And we had things everywhere. There yeah. were things in folders, so we codified it, we brought it together. Uh, so again, I think it's the time is right. I'm sure in between it has been looked at, or you've added policies, obviously. Yeah, but we have a I new school committee, um, so we can go forward. I'm sure it's nothing that's going to happen quickly, but we can stop the, the ball rolling and get yeah. some regular meetings together. Yeah, I think that would be I'm good. I'm excited. <laughs> you like that stuff. I do. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else? Nope. Okay. Um, unfinished business. BHS Accreditation Steering Committee School Committee Appointment. Um, Principal Walder. Good evening. We had a couple of people who were going to come and present to you tonight, but I asked them to stay home. So one of the co-chairs of the uh, accreditation over the overall process, uh, Tracy Chula, she'll be back at some point to, to meet with all of you, as well as Joanne Nelson, who is the chair of the committee that we need one of you to sit on. She's also the editor for the entire process. Uh, in your packets was an overview of accreditation, what it is, and it, it is NIASC comes in and they basically evaluate us to determine if we are meeting seven standards. Uh, and we have committees for each one of those standards. And the standard that we need someone from uh, the school committee to sit on is the core values, beliefs, and expectations. And that's where Mr. Dunnigan had been in that seat. He will continue as a parent. Uh, but we need someone who is acting currently it is on the school committee to, to fill that seat. Um, and what that means basically is we've, we're in the second year of the process. We did the first year of the self-study so we completed all of the surveys we we've created our core value statement that uh, we actually had uh, Janet Allison from NIASC come down and meet with the entire faculty and and she said what we created was very good and so we've moved forward with that it was something that was approved by the school committee and the faculty last year and so now we have to start living this document and the role of the person from the school committee would be to help make sure everyone else on the committee is very familiar with it and what's happening in the school and how we are living that document because next October the 4th through the 8th of 2014 uh, the visiting team will be here there will probably be close to 30 <coughs> visitors that will come in and they will meet with all of you at some point uh, because it is something that they meet with every school committee member uh, pretty much every teacher in the school and as many students as they can as well as parents and community members and so uh, the more familiar people are with the document the more that uh, the person who sits on that committee brings information back to you the more prepared everyone will be uh, we do have meetings that are scheduled during the regular school day so because teachers have to sit on those meetings but the expectation would not be that you leave your jobs to come up to those meetings because you can communicate electronically with most of it and Jody's very good about sending information out uh, phone calls to make sure that whoever is sitting on the committee is is aware of everything that's going on and all of the information that you would need uh, to rep to present to everyone else uh, she would make sure that you had all of that information so uh, please don't decide whether or not you'll be on it based upon 
whether or not you're available during the regular school day because that's not necessary uh, the, with technology we can meet all the time now without actually seeing each other so if you have any questions about the expectations ultimately you are the liaison from for us for the rest of the committee to make sure that the committee knows what is going on with accreditation and to be prepared for that October visit does anyone have any questions okay um, I did receive a um, phone call from Mr. Healy expressing an interest uh, Mr. Healy, are you still interested in that um, Certainly, yeah. position? Um, is there anyone else that wants to be considered? Or is everyone fine with Mr. Healy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Mr. Robinson, could you make a motion? Motion to appoint uh, Mr. Mike Healy uh, to the uh, High School Accreditation mm -hmm. Committee as the School Committee Representative. Can you second it? Second. Thank you. Ms. Clark? Okay. Any further Thank discussion? You. All in favor? Okay, Mr. Healy, thank you for volunteering. You are our appointee. Thank you. Next item, Madam Superintendent. I think that's it, new business. New business, facilities, use and planting, plant, planting, yeah, planting. Planning, subcommittee report. Mr. We, Mr. Healy, or? I'm sorry. Um, we have the um, subcommittee report <coughs> that um, of the uh, subcommittee that you chaired last week. The meetings, yeah. Yeah. I do with that. Isn't that's in the, that's in the packet, isn't it? Did you um? Enclosure 14. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Did you want to present those to the committee for their um, review and approval? Uh, we needn't read them all since everybody was there, do we? Should we? Um, whatever you'd like to do, absolutely. All right, well, uh, we'll go through it. It was pretty succinct. Uh, Mr. Thomas was brought up to report, and uh, he talked about the feasibility study for the Whitman School as a positive alternative. And uh, we a motion was made and we decided we would go ahead with that. I believe that's going to be a great asset to that neighborhood to bring that school back online. Uh, we talked about the feasibility study uh, at the Howard which was done because that was our only option at the time and a motion was made to table that as it's really not a good fit for what we need to do going forward. Um, the statement of intent for the the work to be done at the Barrett Russell, the Keats Center, the Brookfield, Ashfield, West, Gilmore, and Raymond, boilers, windows, roofs, etc. Uh, we went forward with that, and Mr. Thomas is presenting that to the uh, to the state to see what kind of approval we get. What's the uh, what's the percentage? Eighty percent reimbursement. Eighty percent uh, reimbursement from the state on that, and. Uh, <coughs> It's to be determined how much they actually will give to us, and then we'll have to go and talk to uh, the city council and see how much they can come up with. Um, the mayor, of course, is in our corner in that regard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, in your absence. And uh, as far as the uh, the module is concerned, uh, the Kennedy School module is certainly. Uh, are in the worst repair. Is that right, Mike? Yes. So uh, those certainly need to be uh, replaced. And we discussed whether we would purchase or lease them. I think we decided that we're going to lease them, assuming then that the company that leases them to us won't want to take them away. So if we need to hold on to them, we probably will get them for either nothing at a reduced rate. That's our hope anyways, going forward. And then uh, as need be, I, it sounds like a band-aid approach, but uh, we may have to replace a few of those other modules. And um, there was, uh, under our master uh, plan, uh, we talked about, uh, there is a, we know that we're going to have to build another school at some point in time. And we talked about the south side in that regard. And that's, that's going to be referred basically to the uh, master plan committee that we put together. Um, we have uh, we have a lot of heady work ahead of us in that regard. 
and uh, I look forward to uh, offering whatever guidance I can and uh, working in concert with Mr. Thomas and all the other members to come up with uh, a plan that is uh, fruitful, beneficial to the system and is cost effective to the, uh, the taxpayers of the uh, city of Rockton. Okay, so do you want to make a motion to approve the minutes of that January 15th Facilities Users and Planning Subcommittee meeting? Uh, yes, I would, sir. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, and then I think we need two motions. One um, to go forward with the feasibility study for the Whitman School for a possible alternative for the additional school year of 2015-2016 and to take the Howard off the table as an option. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? And um, I need, I think, also a motion to go forward with an RFP for 10 modular classrooms at the Kennedy School. Michael made the motion. Judy, want to second that? Second. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, anything? To report, any school committee member? Anything? No? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. Alicia? All right. All in favor. Thank you. Thank you for attending.